Hi. Magic's Movie Edit Pro or MEP and Video Pro X or VPX have a feature that allows you to create your own masks to use with effects, so long as you have Zara Photo and Graphics Designer or Zara Designer Pro X installed in your computer. In this tutorial, we'll look at how to use this feature to create masks to either blur out something, like a face, or the inverse, blur out the background or some other effect. I have a short video on the timeline of about 5 seconds. We see a dog and a person walking. I want to create two animated masks to blur out both. With the video selected, click on the Effects tab and select Sharpness. Before putting any effects on this image, I want to first create the masks. Click on the down arrow on the upper right of the Effects window to open the menu. Near the bottom, we see Create Effect Mask and Load Effects Mask. If you want to use the masks that came with MEP or VPX or one that you've made yourself, select Load a Mask. In our case, we want Create Effect Mask. Clicking on it opens Zara, if installed, in animation mode. We see the first frame of the video image, a toolbar at the left, and the animation frame gallery at the right. There are some buttons with New, Properties, Preview, which is not on yet, Copy, Delete, which is also not turned on, and Help. There are two icons at the right. The eye or eyes toggles between See Only the Active Frame or See All Frames. The padlocks allow selecting objects and editing them in all frames or only the active frame. This is useful if you want to select objects that are in multiple frames. In the window below, the first line has headings. There are two boxes. The first is to indicate if this is supposed to be the background frame, normally the first frame. The second one is overlay. Then we have the two timer buttons, which move the frame backwards or forwards by a small amount. Then there's the frame name, in this case frame 1, which starts at 0, 0 and displays for half a second. I'll open the properties and we can see that we can change the name of the frame and indicate if it is to be a background or overlay frame. We'll ignore these in this tutorial. Next is the local delay. Display this frame for 0.5 seconds. This is the default. What happens is that every time I press on the copy button, the background video, and this the animation, advance by half a second. If we need to tighten this up, it can be decreased down to frame level, if necessary, or increased if you don't need that many frames. I'll leave this at a half a second. Now I want to create a mask for the dog and another one for the person. You can use the shapes or the vector drawing tools to create the mask. For the dog, I'll select the circle shape on the flyout toolbar. Holding down the left mouse button, draw the circle over the dog to completely hide it. If you want to see the image below the mask, with the mask still selected, click on the transparency tool and move the transparency slider to the right until you see the dog. If you want to move the mask, click on the selection arrow and drag the mask or the circle. There are also corner and side handles to change the size and shape of the circle and clicking on the object again changes these to rotation handles. I'll click again and increase the size a little bit. For now, I'm going to keep the transparency, but normally you should put it off or back to opaque, otherwise the mask will be partially transparent. Next, masks have to be white, not black, so with the circle still selected, I'll click on white in the color bar at the bottom of the screen. Since I want to animate this mask, I have to give it a name. With the circle still selected, click on the pencil or right-click on the circle and select Names. This opens the Names interface. I'll type in Dog and press on Add, and now I have the circle named as Dog. I'll move the interface out of the way or close it. Next, I want to create a mask for the person. This time, I'll loosely trace around the person using the Shape tool. Just start clicking. You can change the parameters at the top to have straight segments or curved. If you really want to make a tight mask of the object, say to use it to put the object on a different background or to not have any background within the mask, you would have to zoom in and carefully trace around the object on every frame. But in this case, I don't need to do that. Close the shape by clicking on the first point. 
The shape is now solid white. While we're here with it selected, I'll give it a name, Person, and click Add. I'll close the Names interface as I don't need it anymore. I'll give this shape some transparency. If modifications are needed, click on the Shape tool again and you'll see the nodes. You can drag these to modify the shape and you can add nodes. There are many editing and drawing features that you can use in Zara and you should become familiar with them. We're ready to move to the next frame. Click on Copy in the Animation Frame Gallery and a second line appears for frame 2. Notice that the video also advanced? I'll click back and forth on the two frames and you can see that things moved by half a second. Looking at the dog, the circle still covers it, so there's nothing to do here. However, we can see that the left leg of the person is outside of the mask. I'll select the mask, click on the Shape tool, and adjust a few nodes, or move the shape over a little bit. When the animation is created, the mask will gradually adjust its shape from the initial nodes to the modified nodes by tweening. Zara creates the images in between the frames so that the transition is smooth, so long as the mask or the shape has a name. Click on Copy to advance to frame 3. Now the dog has gone beyond the mask, so I'll select its mask and drag it over the dog. The person has also moved beyond the mask, so I'll select its mask and drag it to cover the person. If any adjustments are needed, I can either resize the mask or move the nodes by using the Shape tool. Once done, click on Copy to get frame 4. Make adjustments as before. Repeat this until you reach the end of the video. Remember that the clip was about 5 seconds, so we'll need 11 or 12 frames to reach the end. You'll know that you've reached the end when the screen goes white. I'll back up to frame 11. I want to reset the transparency of all of the masks in the frame, so I'll click on the Eyes button and on the padlocks to allow them to be selected. Click on the screen and select all using Control A. You can now see the nodes. Click on the Transparency button and drag the slider back and forth to zero. Deselect the eyes and the padlocks. You can click on the various frames to see that the transparency is gone. If you want to preview the animation before going back to the video editor, click on the Preview button. The preview screen comes up full size. Since my video is 1920 by 1080, the editor takes up more than my screen size. Unfortunately, there's no way to resize this interface right now. Only drag it. Press on the play arrow to see the animation. If you see anywhere where the mask went off of the image, then you'll need to locate that frame and add in an intermediate frame or move or resize the mask. Click on the stop button. Now you can scroll through using the slider. The left and right arrow buttons go from frame to frame, so you can count them to find out approximately where you have a problem. Exit the preview window by clicking on the X at the upper right. You may have to drag the window over a bit to see that X. Make any adjustments that you want, and if you need to insert frames, follow the guidelines in the Zara manual. Now we're ready to go back to Map, so click on the Exit to Movie Editor button. This should take you back to Map or VPX, and you'll see a new object on Track 3, the Animation Effect Mask. If you pass the mouse over it, you'll see the down arrow, which indicates that Chroma Key Alpha has already been applied. If you don't know anything about using Chroma Key, see my other tutorials on this or consult the manual. Right now, it's done for you automatically. Scroll across the video. Nothing has happened, right? We need to add the effect. With the video clip selected, I'll give it some artistic blur. The entire image is blurred. Look at the effects keyframe area near the bottom of the effects window. We see that artistic blur has been added and that there's a button to the right of it. This button is off, meaning that the effect is applied to the entire screen area. Click on the button to turn it on and we see that the two objects are now blurred, thanks to the masks. Drag the playback marker to scrub and you can see that the masks smoothly follow the objects that we wanted to blur. Of course, you can modify the effect and add other effects. I'll add an effect, see, under Art Filter, Substitution. Oh, the entire screen is affected. Clicking on the button in the keyframe area restricts the effect to just the masks. I'll delete this last effect. 
Now, say I want to invert this to have the background blurred and my objects clear. Move the mouse over the animation object to see the down arrow and click on the arrow to turn it upwards. Now we have the background blurred. Notice that the interface is sharp with no feathering. Unfortunately, at the moment, you cannot use the feathering command in Zara. If you do, you'll no longer see the mask and map. To edit the masks, double click on the animation object and it will reopen in Zara. If you've lost the toolbars or anything else that sometimes happens, you can get them back by going to Window, Control Bars and selecting Toolbar or whatever it is you need in the interface. Click on the Select button and then on the Dog Mask. Use the feathering slider at the top to add a feather edge. As I said, this will not work back in MAP, but it will work if you export the animation to an EVI file with transparency. I'm using MAP, so I'll remove this feathering. There is another option. Use the Transparency tool. With the Dog Mask selected, I'll click on the Transparency tool. I'll change the type at the top from None to Circular. This is too much as we can see. Double click on the line to set a node and then change the transparency slider to zero. This will give some feather edging. Not perfect if the mask is an odd shape, but it's often better than nothing. For the other odd shaped mask, I would have to use a different type, like elliptical. Of course, it would have been best to think of adding the transparency while making the mask in the first place because I would now have to go back and redo every frame. Okay, I'll go back to map. We're pretty much done, but I have one last tip. If you don't need an animated mask, you only need to create the first frame in Zara with your mask or masks. If you want to keep your mask for future use, in Zara, deselect everything, go to File, Export PNG, navigate to where you want to save the mask, type in a file name, then click on Settings. Don't export yet. Select the Options tab and make sure that Transparent is checked. Now you can export. You can then drag this in to use as a mask for other purposes or load it for an effect rather than creating a mask the same way that we did. Just remember, this PNG mask is static and can no longer be edited. Okay, we're done. I hope that this has helped you understand how to create and use your own animated masks using Zara from within Movie Edit Pro or VPX and how to use them with effects. Thank you for watching. Till next time, enjoy.